But anyway, I think there's also a video here that I wanted to quickly check out to see because I think Andrew Schultz spoke about it. So let's see what Andrew Schultz had to say about the thing itself, the show. This is courtesy of, um, what you call it, Flagrant 2 or Flagrant Clips, where he speaks about the whole experience. Let's see how it was. His own show, The Kid Super Show, where he basically has a bunch of comics wearing the clothes. It's not the yeah. traditional models, you know. There were Santino's out there, Stavros was out there, Theo Vaughn was out yeah, there. Jeff Mateo, Ross. Jeff Ross, Matteo. Eve. Yeah. That's not a new idea, by the way. This has been happening for a long time. I forgot which one it was. I think it might have been an Adam Kimmel show, actually. Adam Kimmel, look him up. A very legendary designer who, for some reason, decided just to retire at the top of his game and hasn't been, since, hasn't been seen since in terms of that aspect of fashion. And he was doing a lot of this stuff, like having comedians be part of the show. Early comm shows would have regular people in it. Alexander McQueen famously modeled in some early comm de garçon shows. So this is quite common. It does happen. But in recent recent years the casting maybe because of the cost of sampling clothes has meant that they only cast models who are a particular size because you're obviously creating things on a runway only to showcase and not everything's going to go into production so to make everything kind of bespoke and custom fit to fit people's different body shapes is a bit long so you just make it as a standard kind of universal sizes so you can get them all in all the models but it's not that big of a deal but anyway you know continue uh, Yvonne. Yvonne. Yvonne Orgy, she's yeah, great. Yeah, she yeah, was she's great. Awesome. And uh, Ferry, he's a French oh, comedian. Oh, Ferry was a French comedian, exactly. Yeah. And, and then, Jay you know, Jay Balvin come, came <laughs> oh, and did wow. a joke. That's like, amazing. Yeah. yeah, and then Tyra hosted. Oh, sick. Jay Balvin did a joke. That's pretty sick. So Jay Balvin did comedy. That's pretty cool. Again, if you're Brendan Shaw, you'd be so pissed. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew Tyra was there. And, uh, and, and then I was on the show, yeah. obviously, as well. And then, like, like doing that and, like, transforming. Oh, sick. He's got those mischief, um, you know, whatever sneakers on right that they, they did that's pretty cool but one of these fashion shows can be like it was by far the just most unique way of delivering the show yeah and basically when you look at all these other fashion shows you're basically trying to go what's the obstacle course for these emaciated people to walk around it yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the challenge it's like do they walk around in nothing do they walk around on water do they walk around in a house like what is it and he was just like nah we're not doing it with models we're gonna have these comedians go up there and how was that? Son, it was, put it this way. Outside of the show, the, the, the theater held like 1,300. Which you didn't know. I didn't know. I thought it was going to be 50 people. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. <laughs> Me too. So I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to make fun of this motherfucker in front of his friends and like these high fashion people and then whatever. And then I found out the night before it's in this beautiful fucking theater. I was like, oh, I got to like write some jokes for this shit. Like, <laughs> this is, this is going to be a, a real thing that I got to succeed. We go. <laughs> Outside of the fucking show, before it starts, there's 5,000 people that are trying to get into the venue. Oh, the police are called. It's barricaded. There's fist fights in the street, like fashion fist fights, which is hilarious, right? Like <laughs> dudes with nails and shit scratching yeah. each other. Like, it is crazy, okay? They got to barricade the venue so people don't go in. They yeah. have to bring down those metal things like, that they're like in front the of the venue. to protect yeah. it. Yo, and the venue was like, crazy. we're not doing this uh, shit. The they venue said no. It. The venue's like, we can't hold this many people. The fire department is getting oh, yeah. called. But I can understand why Schultz is so excited because imagine he's performing in casinos, in dingy comedy clubs and bars where people are, you know, stuffing their faces full of chicken fingers and whiskey and beer and he's getting shouted at by some mum who's pissed off at her husband and is taking out her anger on him because she reminds him a little bit of her husband and these other terrible venues and maybe the odd fear to here and there. You know, the comedian slog is a bit of a slog, which is probably explaining why a lot of these guys prefer podcasting because, you know, it's easier money and also you don't have to subject yourself to the abuse of strangers on your stage and the unpredictability of it and going to perform to a place where you think it's sold out and you get there and it's not sold out and you've got a whole arena full of people who have been given free tickets and shit right awful awful crowds to go from that to go to a fashion show in paris you're being flewed out there you're being taken around in uber x's and lo really long body mercedes with drivers that can't speak english but make you feel elevated and posh and pampered people are opening doors for you you're getting asked all these millions of questions because you're this nice new exotic foreign creature from america it must feel amazing 
So I'm not surprised he's absolutely giddy about this and, you know, really, really excited to explain the story because this is probably far better than going to perform at the back of some casino somewhere in the middle of nowhere in America. As much as he tries to lie and say that's obviously great, going and do those things and picking up a 10 grand check, it can be probably the most laborious and gruesome 30 minutes of your entire life. So it makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. shit, they thought right? the show would get canceled for a second because it was just so packed. And then oh, you have to the think like best case scenario. No, you, yes, yes, so, yes. Assuming no one gets hurt, but okay, yeah, but yeah, yes, for sure. But remember, the people that you want in that show are the writers from Vogue and and from Women's War Daily and. See, I'm not Nigerian, brother. I'm I'm from Angola. I'm from Angola, a nice little country just above South Africa. That's where I'm from. I'm Angolan, not Nigerian. But big up my Nigerian brothers and sisters still. We're all one race under the African African banner. Buyers for all these places because you want our boy to get the, you know, get the press and get this. And they're coming from another show all over. So they're showing up and it's 5,000 people outside. The best possible thing that could ever happen yes. is all those people yes, yes, need yes. to get into a show. Yeah, that's it's what I'm the saying. Best the best, I told Mark best before this show even started, I was like, Mark, it would be awesome if we all went up and killed. Do you know it would be better? If this show never fucking happened, because yeah. <laughs> five thousand people tried to break into it yeah. and it was just absolute mayhem. It's yeah. like, well, what is it? Why? Why is there so much energy around Kiss Super? <laughs> um, they end up making the show happen. It's like an hour late, which is also fire. Yeah. Like fashionably late. Boom. Boom. And uh, by the way, I'm John Africa. If, in case you're wondering, I am John Africa. Whenever he says who John Africa is, I'm John Africa. Mike Tyson. If you're if you're confused. I am John Africa. <laughs> Tyra goes up. Tyra's fucking great. All the comics go on. It's fucking funny. It's interesting. It's different. Bro, like Theo was killing me, bro. Theo's During, crazy. During like the walkthroughs, like everyone's walking around, and Theo is just always Theo. It's amazing to watch it. I never really hung out with him, like like off, like yeah. watching him on like his bot and stuff. But he's just standing there, and like they're giving the walkthrough, and this guy looks like Yoda is like explaining what to do. He's like, okay, so you walk around this, these are like this, and then it just gets dead silent. He just goes like. So how do you even win? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's like, but do you win? Like, how do you yeah. even get win the thing? And yeah, they were like, yeah. no one wins. And he's yeah. like, oh, okay, good. Okay. But he's I mean, just it's unbelievably funny. Wait, yeah, he's so just funny. You guys great. just walk. Theo's got funnier since leaving Brendan Schaub. He's got richer. He's expanded his network. He's friends and smooching around with flipping Jay Balvin. There's a clip of Theo recently on his podcast speaking about how he may be working with the UFC. He's sitting down with the UFC to figure out some sort of idea, some sort of content piece he's going to do. Imagine if Fia Vaughn, just simple, this is meant a simple thing. Imagine if Fia Vaughn does like a schmo type style show where he's interviewing fighters during their fight camps or during, you know, when they're, uh, whenever they're in the institute, that flipping performance institute. And he's interviewing them in his kind of funny Fia Vaughn way and just trying to break the ice and make some good content. Imagine how well that content will do. Fear of Vaughn in a schmo type style video interviewing fires. Imagine how well that would do. Imagine. Imagine the flipping seething with jealousy that Brendan will have that Fear of Vaughn has now become, you know, pally pally and friends with people in the UFC brass to the point where he's getting checks cut from them. They're paying him money. They're flying him out on private jets with flipping Joe Rogan to go and do fight cards. Or maybe he sits down and he does color commentary as a little joke. Imagine how cool that would be. It would be so much fun, so funny. But Brendan will be so jealous because he's already jealous anyway when Theo does that whole tweeting thing during the cards and his tweets come up on the screen. Brendan's always flipping, you know, trying to be funny about it, but clearly jealous, talking about how Theo Vaughn's sucking up to the UFC. Well, I guess it worked, didn't it? Brendan tried to suck up to Brendan. Brendan tried to suck up to Dana, sorry. And Dana reminded him, you know, we're not friends, which I'd never really understood why Brendan did that because Dana seems to be the most petty person and the most vindictive person ever. And he seems like the kind of guy, if you cross him, it's over. So the fact that Brendan tried to get back into his good graces was hilarious because he got good douched and he told him, you know, um, What's the words you said that lit up uh, Brendan? Um, that makes sense, right? That's it. That makes sense. And it made Brendan go into a tailspin and do video after video after video attacking Flipping Dana. But yeah, big up Fear of Vaughn, man. Look how much success he's got out of everything. Look at him. Shining. 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 Walked. Like no, you. so you walk uh, you walk onto the stage like a traditional theater, yeah. right? You basically walk to the middle, make a right angle, walk to the front, and then you do a few minutes of stand-up. Oh, okay. And then after that, you well, get off. What was that experience like? 
Um, <laughs> you killed. It. So yeah, it was fun. It was fun, but like the 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 crazy thing was not knowing what the audience was. I was yeah. like, do these motherfuckers speak English? Are they kids? Super specific fans? Are they fashion fans? Like, because I wanted to make some jokes about fashion. Mm-hmm. Because when will I ever have the opportunity to do that? Mm-hmm. Like right, kind of right. specific nuance shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but a too cool show typically is not good. Typically, yeah. but that's why it was the frenzy people got in. I think they're already more geeked because yeah. they're like, they I got felt in. Like they're, so yeah. it's a hotter crowd, and they're yeah, more yeah. willing to laugh because like I'm gonna yeah. enjoy this shit that much more because they couldn't yeah. get in and I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cool. And there's nothing fashion people want. This Akash is like Schultz is BGO in it, but he does stand up. That's probably what BGO should have done. BGO, to be useful, he should have maybe did stand up too. Maybe he could have been in Brenda Schultz's good graces because sh- Akash will get on his knees and give Schultzy the good glizzy guzzling in it. God almighty, mate. He is really, he, he's looking at, he's looking at, um, he's looking at Schultzy. Do you know how you used to look at your parents when you needed money, when you were young? When you were just like looking at them like, in, like when, when you needed money, like, You know, you just try to give them the eyes like you're trying to be a good kid. Listen, me being a good kid. That's how <laughs> Akash is looking at Shotzi. He absolutely loves him. Like, that's his man. He loves that guy. He loves him. That is pure love and adoration. Like I agree with everything you're saying. I know exactly where you're coming from. It's like this. It's like that. He loves him. Really? Uh, Uche, okay, Akash is big in Canada. Is Akash big in Canada because they've got a lot of Indian people there? I don't know. Pers- oh, yeah, they're doing it. Isn't Thingy from India? So it isn't isn't Russell Peters from Canada? He's Canadian, right? I'm pretty sure he said there's a big Indian population in Canada. Or, or my or my bugging out? Didn't he say that? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Russell Peters is from is from Canada. Maybe maybe he's not. He's from fucking Ohio or somewhere or Denver. But regardless, Akash loves Schultz. So BGL should have definitely do. He should have definitely did. Um. Oh yeah, <laughs> Nav. <laughs> Akash is Nav. Um. BGL should have definitely did stand up. And basically try to be um, Brendan's Akash. Yeah, be to sh- Akash. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Let's play it. Want more yeah. than to be a part of the thing that nobody could get into. Yeah. 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 Oh, the best. Can I read something from Vogue that they wrote on this? Uh, uh, so yeah. They wrote on like the comedians and their little Fuck bits. Yeah, read it. <laughs> they wrote, wrote about Andrew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The closing act, Andrew Schultz worked a routine around Alexander Wang that was enough to give a publicist recurring nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you guys heard of Alexander Nice. Wang? Good guy. I like that. Alexander Wang content is good. Because if I'm not mistaken, Alexander Wang was put in was sprinkling, was doing a bit of salt-based sprinkling of MDMA in the drinks of unbeknowing young twinks and getting them to get lit. And then obviously, you know, taking advantage of them in a sexual manner, in an adult manner. Alexander Wang, the famed designer, who's funny because Alexander Wang is also the favorite designer of flipping Julia Fox, who's a big advocate. She's a big Amber Heard apologist. She's like, oh, Amber Heard didn't get justice. Joint Depp is an abuser, all this social justice stuff. But then she loves wearing flipping Alexander Wang and shouting him out and giving him praise. When it's been documented, I think they settled out of court that Alexander Wang was spiking young models and scenesters, drinks and twinks and whatnot, and basically doing loads of really weird, inappropriate, sexual and really horrible stuff to them, which is pretty crazy, to be honest. I don't know, like, really, really rubs. Hey, you got some yeah. accusations. Yeah, so he was he was basically like me too and dudes like crazy. Yeah, and it was funny. Like after the show, we're at the after party, and there was a bunch of these uh, these male models came up to me, and I know they're male models because they uh, called themselves male models, which is the weirdest thing. Yeah, like you could just be like, we model. Yeah, you don't have to be like, we're male models. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm like, oh, is that what gender? Oh, I'm- <laughs> hey, he's, that's a bit of hate there. I think they look really good looking. That's why. That's a bit of that's a bit of male hate. Because you know what a male model looks like. You see a guy, you can tell he's a model straight away. That's a bit of hate. That's a bit of like feeling inadequate, you know, because that's the one thing you, because I've only been to Paris Fashion Week once um, when I went for one of the off-white shows back in the day. I was able to get an invite from Virgil. So big up Virgil, RIP to the great. But when I went to a fashion show, I think it was like 2017, the one thing you realize when you go to a fashion week, especially Paris Fashion Week, you immediately feel ugly. <laughs> like instantly you feel ugly i don't care how hot you are in your area how cute your friends think you are how much attention you get from other men 
or women when you go to paris fashion week you immediately feel underdressed all the time and you feel ugly all the time especially if you're just a regular civilian and you don't you know stun every single day and i remember that being one of the occurring sort of emotions and then you know after day two you kind of get used to seeing beautiful people and people dressed amazingly after a while and it becomes normal but the first time you land when you first get interacted with it it's kind of you know it's kind of hard to take in all these flipping stunning people who clearly take a lot of pride in their appearance and spend a lot of money on it and here you are sitting there like i was in a little unico t-shirt with some levi jeans and some air force ones you're like Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> i'm a male nurse you're like you gotta let them know you know yeah, what i mean know, it could be anything <laughs> i mean i'm gonna add gender to everything <laughs> from now on are you a male comedian i'm a male comedian yeah, yeah. and i was doing male comedy that night <laughs> but uh but uh, yeah so i was like i was like thinking, all right what's the joke about what's the joke about like alexander wang and i was able to like tie some things in and like kind of you know whatever whatever we'll probably post it yeah. it'll be up soon whatever we'll get it we'll post it and then um oh, please do just doing some other that that'll go viral again that's gonna be awesome please share that that'll be awesome to see them go viral within the little fashion community because it's been pretty weird how he was able just to come back to fashion with little to no reprimand really i know there's nothing you could do retroactive as an industry but he was documented he legitimately spiked these guys drinks and sexually assaulted them right in many many ways some are really egregious ways like really horrible stuff like documented stuff and he just got welcomed back like nothing happened crazy other stuff so it was cool to do something that i thought was like a unique set just for that environment yeah that i kind of never do right, again right, right. and uh and it was just and it was just fun and then at the end i had a kind of like thoughtful moment for uh for column it was kind of cool there was oh, yeah. like Colm used to go to the fucking Louis Vuitton store in New York when he was a teenager and he would sell his shirts outside to the people waiting online to get in. Uh, and then and then I was like, and now he sells his shirts inside. So that's mm. fine. And it was like, you know, it's a fucking yeah. cool little moment for a guy who's really awesome and has been supportive of us. So, no. But even if you don't yeah. care about fashion, I feel like his story and what he's done, like trans... To be fair, the, the fact that these guys love this Kid Super guy so much and his designs, in my opinion, suck balls says a lot for why I don't like the designs. If fashion, if comedians think it's good, it's probably a bad idea. Comedians love Amiri and Gucci and all that sort of gaudy stuff anyway, so they don't have the best, you know, they like fucking wearing Roots of Fight t-shirts and all this sort of nonsense, but no thank you so much. I don't want my walls to cross over. I'm very segmented and, um, yeah, I'm very segmented and in that way. I want my fashion stuff to exist there, my sneaker stuff to exist there, my UFC stuff, my football. I don't want crossovers. I don't want my UFC fighters, you know, crossing over my footballers. I don't want any of that stuff. I just want them to live in their different buckets and I can dibble and dab when I need to and that's it. But I don't want them to kind of cross-pollinate in any kind of way, shape or form in the slightest, personally. In sense to where it can go into any industry. That's why Absolutely. I thought it was cool, Ben. Like I and fashion, his team too. Like he's got a yeah, great yeah. group of guys. Photo like shout out to guys. Photo. And like yeah, yeah they, he's got a yeah, what they got going. <laughs> Uche, I'm glad this comment didn't come. I got, I'm glad the chat. I had to restart the chat box. But Uche's comment is flipping wild. I have this random theory that Schultz's wife is trans, which would be wild considering how much they go in on the trans on their show. I have a trans friend that's passing, and she looks really similar to his wife. <laughs> I love how you just assume his wife is trans because he looks like your friend who happens to be trans instead of maybe the wife just looking like a woman maybe instead of your friend maybe caught I don't know it's just hilarious I find it hilarious I'm not going to be the guy that's going to try and pull up Schultz's wife on the stream because I don't think that's fair. She's not a public person. She's just, you know, linked with shorts and they're together. But I really want to see what she looks like right now. But I don't want to be that guy pulling up these things and tearing people down. And especially when it comes to women, it's really weird when a guy sits here and starts giggling over girls, you know, and taking a piss out of what girls look like. I think it's fun to do it with guys. It's all well and good. But when I do it, the optics are a bit bad. But... <laughs> what is this thing you know what oh, sorry sorry what's oh, um i'm just thinking i'm just thinking i'm just thinking, just, just thinking. what is this thing issue with the, the wife anyway i think whenever i jumped on the flagrant subreddit i did see a couple of messages here and there about people yeah that's what sorry that's what i saw i think i saw red bar talking about um red bar talking about maybe schultz doesn't like his wife and might get divorced or something why what's that narrative what's that narrative why are people saying those things 
I don't get that impression. They seem to be madly in love, from what I can tell. They're always hanging out together. Like, Schultz seems to be one of the rare comedians in that JRE extended universe who actually talks about going on dates and hanging out with his wife. Like, he takes pictures of her on Instagram. They're, like, holding hands and, you know, have their arms around each other and clearly look like they enjoy hanging around with each other. Whereas I feel like the rest of the comedians basically use their wives as, like, adult babysitters. Do you know what I mean? They're basically... That's what they are. They don't actually have any kind of... Uh, friendly relationship or anything it's just business sort of thing like you look after the kids i go collect the money so you can drive the g-wagon whereas i feel like with hers they look like they actually are friends and they hang out and she comes to shows and whatever it may be i don't know who knows who knows but yeah let's play the end of it and we'll continue going on kind of reminds me of what we got going on man it's like it's really cool yeah Yeah. like even when they're putting together the show i was like oh these (laughs) motherfuckers don't have no clue what they're doing yeah they're just doing it and i was like yeah that's every project we've ever done yeah yeah you know we're like we're gonna make a special for netflix and then they're like have you done this back man don't worry about it we're gonna figure it out like but it's just cool like fashion is so exclusionary and so like no one can get in and like so too cool and what he does is like opens it up most of these fashion Mm. shows it's still exclusionary my friend who got into that show did you see an invite? I didn't see an invite. Did you get an invite? I didn't get an invite. It's still exclusionary. Let's not let's not lie and say because it was our friend, he made it open arms and everyone was walking in there. I didn't see uh, any regular folks in there, mostly industry folks. Shows like 100 people. He's like, 1,300 people can come yeah. here. Like fashion shows are like, oh, you have to look this way and you have to be this thing and you have to be super cool. And he's like, nah, fuck it. Get Stavros in here. Yeah. Like, I don't, it just it feels much more open and much more like, uh, yeah. shot to stop. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, big up them. I guess they had fun. Big up Kid Super, even though I fucking hate the clothes. But I guess if I'm Brendan, I am absolutely pissed. Like, I'm the fashion guy, and this is what's happening. Not on, not on my watch. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. But hey, it is what it is, isn't it? 